Hi, hey, hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to Recent Reads, and also, it's Christmas in July, sort of. So, I read a couple of books. I read three books. Three books. Um, and they are all poor, poor, and they are all part of a series which I have previously read. So, I'm gonna like kind of go through the previous ones and then dive into the new ones. So, yeah. I have my notes, so I, you know, speak of them in the right order. Basically, it's just a Goodreads list of the order. <laughs> so, the very first one is a novella, a quick reads. It's called A Very Distant Shore. Although it did come out after the first book, it is set before the first book. So, we're going to talk about it in this order. So, A Very Distant Shore. It's basically on the remote island of Muir. Muir? Muir? I can't say that word name, so forgive me. It's M-U-R-E. That one. On this, uh, this, on this remote Scottish island of this name, the local GP is retiring and so they are in need of a doctor in a refugee camp. I want to say not far away, but it is. A, it's a bit far away. There is Saif. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right. We don't know. We're just going to go with it. And, you know, he gets the opportunity. He arrives in this Scottish island where everyone is very, very Scottish. And he is very much not Scottish. And uh, it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's a cute kind of mini love story, although not actually a love story um it's it's just a prequel it's a prequel so we are moving on to book number one it's the summer seaside kitchen which is what mine is called but it also goes under a different title which is the cafe by the sea it kind of makes sense um i but yeah <laughs> So, long, long ago, Flora, who we do follow mostly here, she fled this remote island to go to London, to be not where everyone knows you because your family is, like, your roots are in this place, but to be, you know, be anonymous, be just a regular Joe, a, re a regular Jane, maybe. Is that what you say? I don't know. Well, she goes to live a life. Anyway, she just also happens to be hopelessly in love with her boss because why not? But fate does determine that she is to go back to the island and so she does. Once there, she soon discovers this new love of kicking and you know she starts to restore the old shop front which turns out to be the cafe by the sea hence the name of the book well the alternate name of the book because i have the summer seaside kitchen you know moving on to book number two it is the endless beach so well in the previous book flora left london um and her gorgeous gorgeous boss well, he kind of followed her. Yes, he did. And now they are finding themselves taking the step towards a romance. A romance. A romance. But, you know, as would happen on this remote Scottish island, there's superstitions and stuff. And, well, obviously she's getting these bad omens that there's heartbreak and disaster and all that is a possibility in her near future or future well uh, you know that's gonna happen but I'm gonna have to read it to find out what actually happens this is just a very short summarization so on to book number three which is the first one of the three that i read now 
the previous ones I read some time ago. I'm just catching up to the series. So the first one is called An Island Christmas, hence Christmas in July theme. We're, we're rolling with things, we're rolling with things. So Christmas is just around the corner. Yes it is, yes it is. And you know, Flora's found herself pregnant. It's what happens when you go womp chicka womp womp. Well not always, but tends to happen. You know, Joel having this not very stable past, um, she's finding herself, she doesn't know how to tell him she's pregnant because their relationship isn't like a very stable thing either because, you know, they haven't really talked about things. You know, communication, people, communication is key. Cool. Cool, cool. <sighs> anyway, so Saif, the local refugee doctor, um, he's found himself settled and also in the previous book he, he did get his two sons, so he has been reunited with them. I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing? I'm just skimming through here. Um, and now he's finding it a bit difficult to navigate how to celebrate this, you know, Western world kind of Christmas with his two sons who's um, started to speak a bit more Scottish than, you know, their native tongue. They're, they're getting native Scottish. Yeah, basically that song. So, book number... Four, 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 four. <laughs> Christmas at the Island Hotel. So, <clears throat> Flora's brother, Fintan. Previously, he got married and uh, his husband kind of died. Sag. But yeah, now he's found himself a widower. What, widower, widower, whoop. He's found himself to be a widower. That was probably the correct one. And he has inherited this new hotel that his very rich husband built. I'm just... Yeah, because he's still his husband even though he's passed. The terminology is... Woof! Anyway. Um, this new hotel needs to be up and running if, you know, if you want to make a living out of it. Also, such a waste to just have it standing and not do anything, is it? So, they are bringing in new people to this hotel because there's a restaurant as well. Obviously, there is. And they need a chef. They also need some other different people and, you know... You kind of meet a, I mean, he's not a prince, but not far off. He's a, kind of a spoiled little rich boy, but his father kicks him out and he ends up working in the kitchen, as you do. He's learning how to live life, you know, but besides this point, besides the point. Flora, having just become a mother, she is running her cafe still, but she's also trying to help Phil Fintan get this new hotel up and running, and she's running him her himself, she's running herself haggard, trying to, you know, make sure everything arrives in time. Also, this new cook, he is chef's kiss, hilarious, and uh, yeah, um, Vinton might find some uh, new fun fun times with him. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute. And for the very last book, the third book I read, which is also book number five in this series, is called An Island Christmas. So the gorgeous, gorgeous Olivia, who's uh, she's from the island and she's left to basically become Instagram famous. She is one of those Instagram models who just goes around the world, live in life of luxury, and uh, yeah, basically that. She has returned. She has returned with a fiancé, and uh, this fiancé just happens to have oodles, oodles, and coodles, and I don't know what, uh, of family money, and they are set to make the most 
biggest, the biggest, most extravagant wedding this island or the world has ever seen before. Because, you know, that's what rich people do, apparently. She's not rich. Her fiancé's family is rich. So, there's that. So she's come back and decided that this hotel, which is a fancy ass hotel, is the place to get married. But uh, also she has this like wedding coordinator who is like, well, we're going to put a nice ring here and we're going to build a circus because why not build a extravagant madness kind of a wedding theme and already this beautiful place. But why not? Rich people. <laughs> and at the same time, Flora and Joel, her former boss, um, who's had a baby and all that, they have decided to also get married. But um, they're doing it very small, very micro style wedding where basically it's just her and Joel. <laughs> basically. Uh, and she kind of gets swept away with this extravagant thing. This mayhem circus. I don't know. Gonna have to read it to find out. There's so many more things happening in all of these books. There's loads of different characters and loads of different story arcs and romance story arcs and whatnot. Funnily enough, being a person who is not always fond of having loads of story arcs, loads of characters and different points of views and all that, having it go back and forth, I do enjoy it in these books because Jenny Colgan, she has just, she's found that thing that makes it work. You are not confused about which character you're following, you're not confused about which characters into which character and what character is doing what and you're just there following along a madness journey with loads of different people and kind of picking up these books and uh, I mean a lot of her other books as well I'm not gonna lie but we'll be focusing on this series right now. Picking up these books is like going home to your family for Christmas and having that wonderful family celebration that, you know, most of us want but not all of us have because we have crazy ass families, you know, as you do, um, but yeah, it's, it's a cozy, high, warm hug. I guess that's the best way to summarize it, not gonna lie. So definite recommend if you are wanting some cozy contemporary romance all that jazz kind of a deal it's I mean there's five book plus a novella short story it's it's tiny it's tiny uh, but yeah that's that and that was a lot of books Whew. okay Thank you so much for watching. I, I appreciate you a lot. And yeah, until next time, take care. Oh, bye-bye.